Sub-Saharan Africa is going through changes and one of the most significant is its a demographic transition. According to ratings agency SNP, the, re uh, the region's working age population is projected to more than double. To relay the economic implications of this is Satyam Pandey, a senior economist at SNP Global. Thank you so much for joining us, Satyam. Now, you say that by 2050, Sub-Saharan Africa's working age population is due to more than double. What are the reasons behind this and how are we faring with the rest of the world? Are we the only region that will experience the significant demographic transition? Uh, sure. Thanks for having me, first of all. Um, you know, the Sub-Saharan Africa, you know, it is projected to, uh, you, know, you know, double its labor force uh, by the year 2050. And like you asked, the reasons are pretty simple. The fertility rate, uh, the uh, you know, number of children that a, a woman generally has over her lifetime is going to be dropping by at least uh, half of what it is right now. It's at about 4.6 children per woman right now. And by 2050, it's supposed to get to close to two, uh, which does help a lot in terms of you know, having fewer children to support, more savings going towards education of the family, and some of it uh, you know, can be spent more on goods and services. And so the investment in the capital markets and so on and so forth, thus kind of giving a nice boost uh, to the economic growth. Working population, of course, we do know that Sub-Saharan Africa is, has always gone through really difficult economic uh, conditions, now being made worse by COVID-19. And obviously, we need more workers, we need more skills, and we need more entrepreneurs. So what could this mean for GDP growth for the region? Uh, you know, like you, you basically rightly said, we've had... You know, lots of vulnerabilities uh, in the in the region coming up from either the pandemic or uh, you know famine or some climate related changes. But given the workforce is going to be more in the working age group, the quality and quantity of jobs that will come in with higher education levels, higher spending in health, I think that would provide a nice kick to the labor productivity growth that the region could possibly tap into the value chain of the global trade and investments. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we are sort of hopeful that we'll get some nice GDP growth rates of above 5% on a sustainable basis. But are we not being maybe too optimistic on those GDP projections? Because I'm thinking a lot of people right now, yes, you know, Africa does have a large working population already, but a lot of people can't work because they don't have the skills and they aren't any jobs available for people. We have a, a huge unemployment crisis. So are we not being too optimistic on those GDP projections? Yes, I think you can look the class in a half full manner or in a half empty manner, right? When it comes to demographic transitions and demographic dividends, we've had both kinds of examples from the past from different reasons. Like if you look at Latin America, you will have a little bit of a pessimistic view on this structural change. While if you look at East Asia or Southeast Asia, even you will get some positive, hopeful uh, in the news. So I think the next 30 to 50 years, I have chosen to take more of a hopeful stance. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, from our own historical experience, because Africa, some of the countries have gone through periods of high productivity. And mm -hmm. if we could only replicate that for a sustained period, I think there is a pretty good chance that we might actually be able to do a nice catch up uh, with mm -hmm. the advanced countries in the next 50 years. More right. of a hopeful message, eh? Yeah, all right. Uh, I'm sticking to your uh, trail of optimism. And I want to know how can we make sure that the region really reaps the benefits uh, that you are talking about of having this younger working population? It all comes down to the fundamentals of quality education and some of the network effects that will come through the migrants, you know, you know going outside and then coming back home. Uh, you know, some of the brain, uh, you know, the loss of brain 
uh, you know, educated people that we have seen in the last 20 years, it could actually turn into a brain gain in some years to come when the network effects start to kick in. Uh, you know, the institutions matter, mm. uh, the political institutions and how they invest in capital uh, formation that is going to help the educated workforce. I think all of this has to come together. Uh, mm. And that should be the, and you know, this is what happened in East Asia, and, mm. I, I, and you know, I wouldn't really write it off.